Hi, this is Dr. Don. I have a question from a student in my 503 section about this homework problem. And she wanted to know if I had a video showing how to solve it. Well, I have a video up on my uh, playlist um, that shows, in general, how to use StatCrunch, uh, the calculators in StatCrunch, to find critical values for normal distributions and t-distributions and f-distributions. But this is a little bit more detailed, and so I thought I would make a new one to uh, show you how to make this easy. In these problems, we're talking about the f-distribution. And remember that the f-distribution is not a symmetrical distribution. And it depends upon the number of degrees of freedom in the numerator and in the denominator of the F statistic. And the degrees of freedom are just equal to the number of items in each of the samples uh, minus one. So here I've, I've put in the degrees of freedom of 25 for the numerator and 15 for the denominator. Remember, we, in this part of the course, always dealing with right tails um, of the F distribution. We uh, don't work with left tails. And so we're going to manipulate our information so we're always dealing with the right tail. And if we're looking for critical values, we have to put in alpha, our level of uh, confidence, 1 minus the level of confidence, to give us our level of significance, alpha. In here, I put all of alpha in the right tail, 0.05. Uh, this would be a one-tail test. If we're dealing with a two-tail test, then we would put half of alpha into this right tail, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. In this problem, we're dealing with the variances of two samples. Remember the null hypothesis always is a form of equality, and we generally write the null h sub o this way, but the operator actually can be equal, less than equal, or greater than equal. The math operator in the alternative must be the complement of the null, and its direction determines the tail of the test. Here the math operator in the alternative is not equal, which means we have a two-tailed test. But when we deal with the F distribution, we're always working with the right tail. Because this is a two-tailed test, we just divide alpha, the significance level, by two and put all of it in that right tail to find our critical value of F. Our dilemma is that we want our critical F value to be as large as possible, and that means the larger variance must be the numerator. But in this problem, we do not know which sample has the larger variance. We then must find f twice, once with the degrees of freedom of the first sample as the numerator and the degrees of freedom of the second sample as the denominator. Then we find f again with the degrees of freedom of the second sample as the numerator and the degrees of freedom of the first sample as the denominator. Because we want the rejection error to be as small as possible, we choose the larger value for the critical value of f. If the alternative hypothesis has the greater than operator, we find f using all of alpha and the degrees of freedom of the first sample as a numerator and the degrees of freedom of the second sample as the denominator. If the alternative math operator is less than, we assume the variance of the second sample is larger, and we find f using all of alpha and the degrees of freedom of the second sample, the larger sample, as a numerator and the degrees of freedom of the first sample as a denominator. Okay, I've brought up the problem again, and I've opened up StatCrunch to uh, get it going. And Although the problem says use the tables, you should know that's going to be very slow and likely to give you problems. The first problem gives us the alternative 
of the variance of sample one is greater than the variance of sample two. The math operator is pointing to the right. Uh, it tells us a one tail test. So we put all of alpha into our uh, far right tail of the F distribution. And because one is greater than two, we put the degrees of freedom of the first sample as the numerator and the degrees of freedom of the second sample as the denominator. So I'm going to do this moving a lot faster than I talk. Calculators, F test. And we bring up our dialog box. We're always going to work with the right tail. So I click that first to uh, show the red area to the right, which is what I want. The numerator degrees of freedom is going to be the first sample since it's a larger minus 1 would be 24. The second sample is the numerator. 14 minus 1 is 13. My alpha is 0 0.01. Put all that in the right tail. Can compute. And you can't see the rejection because its areas is way over here and it's very small. Uh, but it gives us a F value, critical F value of 3.59 when we round to two decimal places. And that is the value for the first one. For part B, we're given the alternative hypothesis of variance 1 is less than variance 2, means variance 2 is larger, which means we put the degrees of freedom of the second sample in the numerator and the degrees of freedom of the first sample in the denominator. So I go back here and 15 minus 1 is 14, 4 minus 1 is 3, my alpha this time is 0.05, I put all of that in the right tail, point in the right direction, and we get, there's our rejection area, the little red skinny area there, of 8.71. And yes, that's the answer they want there. So the third one is an alternative with not eagle, which means it's a two tail, which tells us we divide alpha by two, two tail divide by two, and we have to do it twice. So let's run it first of all with the sample one as the numerator, that'd be 15, and Sample 2 is 24, and I've got to put 0.025, which is alpha over 2. Click Compute, and I get a value of 2.44. Let's do it again with 24 and 15, 0.025, Compute. I get 2.44. 70, that's the larger value of F, which means the critical area will be the smallest, and we choose that 2.70. The fourth problem is again a left tail test. The uh, variance of sample 1 is less than the variance of sample 2. We put all of alpha in that right tail. And we'll go over here, and since variance 2 is larger, that'll be 60 and 30. Get those in there right. And my alpha is 0 0.025. Whoops. 0 0.025. Make sure we've got it in there right. Click Compute. And we get 1.94 as our critical value of F. The last one again is a two tail, and I'll go first with six, I'm sorry, five n minus one, and 21 minus one would be 20, and my alpha is 0 0.05, divide that by two, 0 0.025, click compute, and I got 3.29 for my first critical value. Let's try it again with the second variance being the larger and 0.025 again. And I get 6.33. 
That's the larger value of F, which gives us the smallest critical, the rejection area being the smallest. So those are our answers.